Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. This one comes from Artur, uh, SB9AG, Sugar Papa 9 Alpha Golf. He says, Hi, Dave, you did a fantastic job in episode 163, while, that was quite a while ago, while explaining how a short circuited balanced transmission line can be used to match high impedance. Could you please explain in similar fashion what happens when we are matching a delta loop antenna using a quarter wavelength 75 ohm coax? The piece of coax acts as a transformer. You got to kind of run the math to see this done, but if you go into 50 and then there's a quarter wavelength of 75 where you have a high impedance at one end, you have a low impedance at the other, and when you turn the crank, matching up all the math, it allows you to match it to it. He says, I have an intuition that also a speaker wire twisted pair or even a power cord of certain length could match a delta loop antenna. Be careful. All of these can be used as RF transmission lines, but your mileage will vary because the impedance of the parallel line is a function of two things. One, the separation between the centers of the wires. Okay, the wider, the higher the impedance. So real close together is not very high. And second, the uh, diameter of the wires. Those two things. So when we use, for example, ladder line, true ladder line has an impedance of 600 ohms, a window line 450, twin lead 300. Uh, by the time you get down to line cord and so on, uh, you'll find that uh, the impedance will get quite low. Have people ever done radio with lamp cord? Of course they have, but uh, it's hardly optimal. Um, after all, those are also some examples of transmission lines in some circumstances. I would like to know the physics behind it. Again, a parallel wire transmission line works where you have two conductors a fixed distance apart. And the impedance of that line, I'm talking about the ratio of voltage to current in the line, is a function of the distance between the wires and the diameter of the wire. It has nothing to do with the ohmic resistance of the line. It just is the impedance, which is the ratio, the voltage to the current. The advantage of using a high impedance line, like a 450 ohm ladder line, is that the voltage goes up, the current goes down. So with less current, you have less ohmic losses. Remember, it's the current that gives you your ohmic losses in the, uh, in the transmission line. So you can actually go quite a long ways with high impedance line, hundreds of feet, for example, uh, without too much loss. And yes, it is possible to construct your own ladder line. I've seen it done. Um, but you've got to keep in mind here that um, you know, the, as, as you correctly point out, the length of the line, quarter wavelength, remember the velocity of propagation will vary in these different kinds of lines. So you're going to have to figure out how to measure the propagation velocity because that will affect the length of the line that is actually um, a quarter wavelength. But all the things that have to do with lengths of lines, quarter wavelength, and so on and so forth, are unaffected by the type of line, except for the propagation velocity. Now, open wire line tends to have a propagation velocity close to that of, of air. It's pretty fast, okay? 0.9 to 0.95, uh, whereas air is 1.0 or 0.9999, something like that. It's not quite the same as the velocity of propagation of light in a vacuum, which is C, about 300 um, million uh, kilometers per second. 
Okay, so any, um, I think that answers the, the question there. All of these will work. I would recommend stuff that's made specially for it. If you want to calculate the impedance of, say, speaker wire, you'll have to calculate the distance between the two wires, which is quite low, which is going to lower the impedance. Now, the point here is you want to raise the impedance for any long length of stuff. So, there you have it. I hope that's somewhat helpful in understanding the physics behind it. The impedance of a line is determined just by two factors. And if you figure those out, then you can do all the rest. But in determining that, you also need to determine the velocity of propagation in the line. Some antenna analyzers will do that for you. So, there you have it. Until we next meet, 73.